It's the first time I'm doing this, so welcome everybody. I am so pleased to see you all here and that the technology has worked. Ah, what a stressful time. I've been trying to test it out, but I haven't been able to, to do it live. So anyway, so <laughs> let's go. So today we're going to learn uh, a little bit about how to produce radio ready tracks from the comfort of your own home. Fantastic. Um, so why are we here? When was the last time you got to jam along with Nashville's best session musicians? And probably your answer to that is going to be never, but it's on my bucket list. So, um, and how would you like these musicians to work on recording your track? Um, would you like to produce a radio ready track? in the comfort of your own home in a matter of minutes. And here's an example. Here we go. This is a track I recorded a while back. a track that um, I recorded a while back in my tiny little home studio which is in the next room and I'm going to let you into a little bit of a secret I was not playing the uke or the guitar on that track I was only doing the the vocals okay would you love to have lots of different instruments play on your tracks but you don't have the necessary skills so you maybe are like me you're a little bit um, hesitant on the, the guitar and you can't play the piano or the bass, but you'd love to have um, those instruments on your, on your track. So if you can imagine for a moment that you have multiple talented musicians who play multiple instruments at your immediate disposal and they're ready to record 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And these musicians can immediately play what you want them to play expertly. No rehearsals, no overdubs, no retakes. And how about if these are real professional session musicians? These are people that record professionally for their living in places like Nashville. Okay, so if you answered yes to any of those questions, you are in the, oh, thank you. You're in the right place. Here we go. So. Before we get going, I just want to go back a little bit in time and uh, going back to 2002. So those are some lovely pictures of me and uh, my band partner, Cuz. It's about 1999 these pictures were taken. So in a bit, uh, mid-2012, I wanted to get back into music. Um, in my previous life, I played guitar and sang in a band, but I played guitar badly and we, we played some various shows and I really loved it um, and I played with this friend of mine, Kaz, there she is and we had some lovely outfits and we played the pubs and various corporate events and things like that, we recorded a CD and that kind of thing. And then she went off to um, sail across to America and never came back to South Africa and I kind of gave up music at that stage of my life and um, I got married and I had kids and music took a back seat for about 10 years of my life. And in 2012, I wanted to get back into music, okay? I started performing with uh, MIDI backing tracks that I downloaded from the internet and then supplemented those with karaoke, um, karaoke tracks uh, that I purchased from the internet or from places like um, Karaoke Version and things like that. Then I decided at that stage I wanted to record a CD but had absolutely no idea how to go about doing that, how to get songs, how to get musicians, how to get studios and whatever. I did some initial messing around with Mixcraft and I recorded some really terrible songs. Um, and I think the, the whole thing was, I, I had bad equipment, but I was, I was a terrible guitar player. You know, it really didn't sound great when I was recording my, my guitar into Mixcraft. I'm not a bad singer, 
but my guitar playing was mediocre to say the least. Then I went into a studio and recorded some slightly better songs using purchased karaoke uh, tracks and that was um, slightly better uh, but very expensive. Um, it took me hours to get three tracks out and then I had three songs uh, for a CD. Then in 2012 I found the most incredible software that completely transformed my musical life. I can honestly say and I think all of you know we're talking about Band in a Box it completely transformed everything in my musical life. Since 2012, I've recorded and released literally hundreds of songs and videos, both original and cover songs, all in my tiny home studio with my laptop and a cheap USB microphone. And I'm making quite a nice tidy sum, little sum doing that. I've been performing at restaurants, private functions, business events, using these unique, customized, full accompaniment backing tracks. In 2017, I produced a video training course for the software, and over 300 people have purchased and by all accounts enjoyed the course. There was one man who didn't enjoy the course and I immediately refunded his money and, and listened to the feedback that he gave me. Um, but I think by all accounts, most people seem to have enjoyed the, the course. Earlier this year, I wrote a beginner's guide, um, an ebook, which is approximately 58 pages, and about 100 people have bought that, that book since then. I run a very active Facebook user group and a YouTube channel, and just recently, this week, I've been appointed as a reseller of the software, and so I'm really excited to be able to start spreading the word of this fantastic um, product and to be able to sell it um, to, to users. So my last message before I start on the demo of the software is if I can do it, so can you. You know, when I started on this journey in 2012, I knew absolutely nothing about home recording. I knew absolutely nothing about music theory. I do know a little bit now, but then I had no idea. Um, I was a complete newbie. So if I can do it, so can you with this, this fantastic software. So let's dive in with what we are going to, um, to learn today. So we're going to spend a bit of a time getting to know the Band in a Box interface. Um, we're going to look at the menu bar, the tracks area, the banners, the mixer window and the, song, the songs area. Then we're going to capture a song structure and choose a style. So we're going to do that live. Uh, we're going to choose a style, we're going to go and get the chords, we're going to get the key, we're going to capture the song name, start and end, number of choruses and key. We're going to capture the chords, we're going to change the key, and we're going to experiment with style and tempo. Then we're going to refine that backing track, so we're going to swap out specific instruments for other instruments. We're going to make specific instruments play in only certain sections of the song. We're going to add another instrument. Uh, and we're going to add even more instruments and then we're going to add an instrumental solo then we're going to add some backing vocals we're going to use stops and holds to add interest uh, and we're going to add lyrics to the file and then finally I'll end off with a, a, an introduction to recording live instruments or vocals using band in a box that's a very very in-depth uh, discussion and um, we're not going to have time to do much more than just an, a basic in introduction today. And then I'm going to wrap up with a, today's special offer and if there's time um, we'll have some Q&A. Um, uh, the, the session is going to last an hour so 45 minutes we'll be finished. So if there's any time I will um, I will um, answer Q&As that come through on the chat, but I will go back afterwards and answer all the questions that you type into the chat. So if you go and have a look at the replay uh, tomorrow or the next day, I will answer all your questions there in the chat. So feel free to type whatever you like in the in the Q&A, uh, in the questions, but I'm not going to be watching those while I'm doing the, the presentation. So let's dive straight in with Band in a Box. So the first thing that you'll see when you open Band in a Box is this interface. If you don't see that interface, you could uh, see this interface, 
which is the newer interface that, that PG Music um, introduced recently, which is more streamlined. Um, personally, I prefer the, uh, the full interface. So that is the interface that I'm going to be using in this demonstration. But you can press Control T to, to toggle between the two types of, um, the two types of, uh, of interfaces. So just press Control T. Oh, and I seem to have killed my session. Right. So this is the interface I'm going to be using in this demo. So I'm going to just run through the main areas that I use on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, this, this demo is based on my own workflow. Everybody has their own workflow, and you will develop your own workflow with this software over time. But I'm going to hopefully show you what I do, which will help to get you going. So this top area of the screen is what I call the menu bar, and it's uh, you know similar to all the Windows normal menu bars. And most of the functions that you can do in this menu bar, you can do using these buttons on the banners. And I mix and match them. Sometimes I use these drop-down items on the menu bar, and sometimes I use these these banners. I never know why I do what I do, but um, that's just the um, the way that I've developed it. This area here is your tracks area. So now what this is basically saying is that these are the tracks that PG Music has decided go with this particular style. Um, it's a popper med style that, I, that I've loaded on here to, to default. And in that style, we've got a bass, an organ, a drums, a guitar, and two guitars. Um, and you, you can do certain things with these, with these tracks. This is the mixer window. So you'll see again that the, 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 the instruments have been repeated here, but that there's more options on, on the mixer. So here you can change the volume of individual tracks. You can change the panning of individual tracks. You can mute and solo tracks. And you can also add external plugins like uh, Reverb and um, uh, PG Dynamics or whatever all sorts of plugins you can add to your individual tracks. So that's what the mixer window does. Then you've got the song area. So this is the title and you always type in the title of the song that you're going to be working with. It's always a good idea. And um, I'm going to be, oh, amazing song. I mean amazing grace. I'm going to be prov providing you with the with a tutorial on how to set up a backing track and record for uh, the song Amazing Grace. Now, the reason I've chosen that song is that it's a public domain song, so I'm not going to get into trouble with the, uh, the, the copyright police. Um, and the other reason is it's a nice song and, and people know it, so it'll be all for quite familiar with you. So that's what I'm going to demonstrate. So I've typed in the name of the song here. Then this is the style that's currently selected to play with this song. Now, I'm going to be talking a little bit more about styles later on. So suffice it to say at the moment that the style that I've got here is the pop o med style. Okay. Here is the um, start and end and number of choruses bars. The, the, what this is saying is that the song will start at bar number one and play through to bar number 32 three times. Exactly the same thing will be repeated three times. Okay. This here is showing you that it's, uh, this is an even beat, eight. So there's different settings that you can use here. You've got even eight, you've got swing eight, even 16 and swing 16. But these settings will get set um, depending on the style that you choose. So you don't have to worry about them too much. Just take note of, of what they are. And then the time signature Again, that gets set by the style, um, and uh, so you don't have to worry about it, but as I say, just take note of it. And then finally, this is the key, and C is always the default key um, that Band in a Box opens up a, a new session with. Sorry, and here is the, the tempo, the beats per minute, so if, if by default it's 120. This here is the chords area in Band in a Box, and this is where all the magic happens. You'll see this in a moment. Okay, so I am going to show you, demonstrate setting up a backing track for Amazing Grace very, very quickly. So the first thing you're going to want to do when you're setting up a backing track is to select a suitable style. Okay, so 
you go into the style picker menu and just press this clear button and that will clear any filters that you had applied here it'll just clear them right now in this little box here just type in the name of the song that you're wanting to make a backing track for so we're trying to make a backing track for amazing grace and you can see here that uh, PG Music has got three versions of Amazing Grace in their songs database. One is an American traditional, which is a folk, uh, and it's a waltz, and it's an even eight, and it's a tempo 85, okay? Then the, the second one is an Alan Jackson version, and it's a country piano ballad. It's also a waltz, and but it's a slightly slower tempo at 75. Then there's a third version, Amazing Grace, My Chains Are Gone, Chris Tomlin. And this one's different. It's a ballad and it's a, it's, it's an, a common time. So it's a 4-4. Four, four. So now if you double click any of these versions, what Band in a Box does is it says, if you're trying to produce a backing track uh, for this version of Amazing Grace, these are some of the styles that you might want to try. So you see, if I double click the Alan Jackson, then the styles that a uh, band in a box recommends that you try change. And again, if I click, click the third version, you'll see that there's a whole different set of styles that band in a box recommends. And these ones are all uh, full four times timing, and these ones are all waltz timings. So say I'm trying to um, do a backing track for the American traditional one, and I double click that. Um, Band in a Box brings up all these, these styles. Now, you need to note, I know, <laughs> can you hear my dog? You need to note that the styles that Band in a Box brings up will depend on what version of uh, Band in a Box you purchased. So the, the very entry level band in a box is the pro version, which retails for 129 Rand. And that comes with a hundred different styles. Then it goes right up to about 600 and something, I don't know, not Rands, dollars. Uh, excuse uh, me saying Rands, I've got Rands in my brain. Uh, the pro version retails for $129. And then it goes right up to an order file version, which is 600 odd dollars. And the styles that you'll see here will depend on what style you purchased in the first place, okay? So you'll only see the styles that you have purchased with your version of Band in a Box. So what you can do is you can audition them. different styles that I can go all the way down and, and audition all these various styles but what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose a style called C Walt -Z -P, which I know is available in the pro I know that this style is, is um, available in the cheapest version of Band in a Box, so that is the style I'm going to use for this demo. So you just press OK. Now you see that Band in a Box has put that style in, in the style box. Okay, so I've done that now. What I'm going to do here with these start and end and number of choruses is I'm going to change the choruses to 1 and change the end to something arbitrary, say 200. The reason I do this is that I um, like to put my song in from start to finish because I like to use different instruments and in different versions in different parts of the song. So in the first chorus, I might want a, a guitar and in the second chorus, I might want a piano and in the third chorus, I might want some backing vocals. So it always, it always changes for me. So I prefer to just have a continuous uh, stream playing um, and then I can do my, my program my own way. And I put the end bars to 200 or something arbitrary, which gives me enough space in this uh, chords area uh, to work with. So just something arbitrary. I'm going to take the beats per minute down to 85, just because um, that's, I'm kind of try, trying to do a slower version of the song, right? 
These are the instruments that Band in a Box has suggested um, will go with the CP country wasp stuff. Okay, so the next step is to try and find some chords for Amazing Grace. If I have some sheet music that um, I am using, like if I've learned to play this uh, piece of music on the guitar, then I'll often use that uh, sheet music that I've got or those chord charts that I've got. But often if I don't have um, uh, charts, I'll use this site called ultimateguitar.com and they've got chords for just about every single song. And what you do is you type in the name of the song and press search and it'll come up with all the different versions. And what it is, is it's user-generated versions. So you users uh, do, do this transposition of the chords and they post it on the site and then people vote for the best one. So what I normally do is just look at the uh, version that's got the highest number of five star ratings and, and what I try and do is look for something that's very simple to start with. So I'm just going to have a look at this one which has got 1,000 five star reviews and if I have it open it and have a look you'll see here it's got F's and then it's got a B flat or the F bass and so yeah it's a little bit complicated not bad i could i could use that as a starting point but let me just have a look at the at the second one so i'm going to have a look at this one with 1300 so i have a look there okay now this one looks like it's got uh it's the kind of chords that i like um for one g is my key of choice i end up singing everything in G and A. I like G, so it suits my, my voice. And they look fairly simple. So we've got a G, a G7, a C and a D. Um, and I'll usually use the most simple chords that I can as a starting, starting point for a song. So let's go back to our band in a box song. And what we do is we start typing in the chords. But before we do that, we need to change the key of the song from C to G. Okay, now I know that the song is in G for a whole lot of reasons and it might not always be that simple but because this um, starts with a G and ends with a G all the, the chords uh, tell me that this song is in G now I know that the song's in G so I change the, the chords the key to G and then I start typing in the chords into the chords area and band in a box so what I'll normally do is just double click on the third bar um, and leave two bars of G playing as introduction. And you can go back at a later stage and change, uh, put a more intricate introduction if you want. But uh, that's how I always start out, is just two bars of the opening chord, and then I start typing in the chords. So I go here and have a look here at the chords. So we've got a G, G7, C, G, and then a D. So let's just start typing those in, C, G seventh, C, G, 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 D, D, okay, and then it repeats that first line and then E minor, D, G, okay, so I'm just going to type in the first line again, G seven, C, G, and then E minor, E what was it? E minor, D, G, D, G, okay. It might take a little bit of messing around to get these chords in the right place. Um, you know, sometimes you might want to, to put them there or they might need more space. So what you're going to do is you're going to type them in and then press play and try and sing along and make sure that you've got the chords in the right place. So you just press generate play and it'll generate the backing for you. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved the wretch. Okay, so immediately I can see that that... Um, is a little bit low for me so I'm going to want to change that up maybe to A and see if that's better for my voice so we'll try again and see if that's better amazing grace how sweet the sound 
key of A is definitely better for um, my for my voice. So now what I'll do, I know for this song that the chords are exactly the same for the uh, for the chorus as they are for the verses. So I'll just literally just copy them down as many times as I want to repeat. So let's just do. Um, that's one chorus, one verse, one chorus. Make it very short. So now you see this little blue box here. That is uh, what we would call a part marker. If you right click on that, you'll see here it's got an A style and a B style. Okay. So if I change this to a B style, it changes the part marker to green. And what that does is it plays the drums a more uh, busy style for the for the drums and often for some other uh, instruments like guitars and things like that. So I will often use the blue marker for the uh, for the verses and the green marker for the choruses purely because the green tends to have more lively drums in it. So in this uh, version of Amazing Grace, we've got uh, one. Uh, one chorus and then a verse and then another chorus and then end. It's a very short song. So I'm going to change that also to green. So now I want my song to finish at bar 50. Okay, so I'll go back here and I'll change the end to bar 50. Okay, you'll see here what it does is it puts bar 50 to be the end of the song and it's got four bars of outro there. So there's the, our first um, first attempt at at a backing track and this is a backing track you can you can you can use immediately as it is now say you want to experiment with this style this is where the real power of band in a box comes in and you can do this even after you've recorded um, vocals or other instruments or whatever you can make changes to the style so say I wanted to try something completely different. So I pull down this category, have a look, and maybe I want a Celtic. Okay, so let's have a look at a Celtic jig. That's going to be very interesting, but it's a possibility. So I'm just going to press OK. And you see here the band box has changed the style from the waltz, the country waltz, to a Celtic, uh, um, a Celtic jig. And it's also changed the feel and the time signature. So this is a, a, a three, a six, eight um, time signature in this style. And it's changed the instruments that were in that style. So now if I play it, I'm going to get a Celtic jig um, version of Amazing Grace. Oh, that's not very nice. That is not very nice at all. Let's try something a little bit different. Okay, it doesn't suit the, 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 the style of that at all. So let's do show all categories. And let's try a waltz. So I'm going to just type in waltz and see if I can find something that's maybe, let's try a jazz waltz. That might be a bit better. Okay, so now again, it's changed the style here. It's changed the feel and the time signature back to a waltz, and it's changed the instruments. Um, the green uh, instruments show that it is a real track, and that's a real musician um, from, from wherever who's actually recorded live uh, samples um, for PG Music, and the PG Music uses some rather fancy software to make it play what you want it to play. The yellow is a MIDI track. Okay, so I've got my jazz waltz style with an electric piano. Let's see what that sounds like. Or rather hear what that sounds like. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound 
that saved a wretch like me. I want. So that that really is a hugely powerful feature of Band in a Box, is just to be able to change the style and to be able to change the key and the tempo, and you'll change up your whole your whole track. So for now, I'm going to go back to um, my country style, okay, which I had in the beginning that I really liked. And what if I want to add another instrument to my backing track? These white tracks here are showing you that um, these tracks are available to use. This melody and the solos tracks are not being used by this particular style. So if I just right click the melody and I select uh, real tracks. Okay, so say I want a harmonica. Because I want a harmonica to play a soloist type thing, okay? You see here I've got lots of different harmonicas to choose from. Now again, the tracks that you will see here will be dependent on the version of Band in a Box that you've purchased. So the Pro version comes with 300 uh, different uh, instrument tracks, whereas the, um, the Ultra, uh, I think, comes with like thousands, I'm not too sure. But the instruments that you see here will depend on what version of, of Band in a Box you, you've purchased. I have the Ultra Pack, which means that I've got all the instruments. So these are the harmonica tracks that I've got to choose from. Now I know that um, my song is a waltz, so I'm also going to type in waltz here, just so that I get all the harmonica waltz tracks. You can see here that there's two uh, harmonica waltz tracks, real tracks. So one is uh, at, a, at a tempo of 140, while the other one is a tempo of 85. So now it's always best to choose the, um, the real track that's closest to the tempo of your song, because otherwise Band in a Box has to stretch and try and squash or, what, or move around this, this uh, track to fit in with the tempo of your song. So you need to select one as close to um, the tempo of your song. So I'm gonna select this one, which is uh, at 85. So I just double click it. Just to hear it on its own. Okay, so that, that sounds like that will work. So I'm just going to press enter. And you see here that Band in a Box has added a harmonica on, onto the end and it'll play through for my song. You'll hear the harmonica playing now. Okay, so say now I only want this harmonica to play in the last chorus. It's quite a busy uh, track. I don't want it all the way through. I only want it in the last chorus. You right click on the first uh, bar and choose bar settings, okay? And come down to the harmonica pull down and mute the harmonica, okay? So that'll mean that Band in a Box will mute the harmonica from bar one. So you see there, um, Band in a Box has put a little red stripe there. That is showing you that you've, you, you have set up some bar settings in the, in the bar settings menu. Then you go down to the first bar of your, your chorus when you want the harmonica to start playing. You right click, click bar settings, and now you um, select the harmonica again and you set back to normal, okay? So now what we've got um, is we've got the, the harmonica not playing for the first chorus, for the first verse, and then it comes in at the last chorus. So if I just play from bar 31, you'll hear it not playing for bar 31, 32, 33, and 34, and then you'll hear it come in at bar 35. Any minute now. So it's not playing now. There comes the harmonica.
So that's how you get uh, different instruments to come in at different times, which is one of the reasons why I um, I don't repeat my choruses. I, I use one just continual string for the for the whole song. Um, and you you might want to use that if you just if you want a solo, if you want a solo instrument played. So say you just wanted a solo instrument, then you didn't want any vocals. You would use that that technique of using the bar um, the bar settings. Um, since a couple of uh, versions ago, um, PG Music introduced backing vocals and they are absolutely stunning. So say I want backing vocals in the second, in the verse, in the, this verse here, starting from bar 19. I want some oohs and ahs, some female oohs and ahs. So just say select real tracks, okay? Press show all to get rid of anything that you had in there before and then put vocals, vocals, and say update. So now you see here, there's all sorts of vocal U's and R's, there's rock and roll, gospel, oh, all sorts of stuff. They've really gone to town on these background vocals. I'm, I'm not sure that everybody gets all of them with all, with all their versions of Band in a Box. But I can honestly say I think that they're really fantastic. So I'm just going to select these female ones, see what those sound like. Isn't that just absolutely stunning? Okay, so I press OK. I want those female, female oohs and ahs. Now if you're on the ball, you will notice that those oohs and ahs were not... Um, we're not uh, waltz U's and R's, but it doesn't seem to make any difference. And, you know, my view is there's no rules in music. You, you can do whatever you like. Whatever you think sounds good, do it. Don't worry about the rules. Just do it. So I've put something that's 4-4 uh, four, four common time in a, in a song with a, a waltz, and it seems to sound okay. So let's hear what it sounds like. Any minute now, it'll start. Isn't that just absolutely stunning? So again, you would use the bar settings to turn those on and off. Go to the bar settings and say, okay, the vocal use I want to mute from bar one, okay? And then I only want them to come in at bar 19. So right click on bar 19 and skip the bar settings and say back to normal. And then mute them again at the end of that verse. Bar settings, mute them again. And now we'll have the, the vocal U's and R's just playing in that section of the song. So if I play from bar 15, you'll hear them not playing in this section here and then they come in here. that just absolutely awesome in about we've literally done this in, in, in half an hour flat a couple of other things I just want to show you on the, the the backing track and then I'll talk about recording the the vocals um, often when you play with a, a band you know the the band will have a nice long strum say in the intro or in the last in the last bar before they go into the the verse you know they'll have one dong oh, yeah i can't really make sound of a guitar but you know what i'm saying they just make one one held chord or one held strum um to lead you up to a certain point so they're what we call stops and holds so in order to do this you position your your cursor on the bar that you want the stop or hold to um, play. So I'm going to put two uh, held chords on the, the two bars of the intro for you to see what that does. So 
right click there and go to the chord settings okay now you see here this rest type just pull that down and say hold chord I haven't actually played with the other types of options but you're welcome to do that and you want a hold for all the instruments okay so you see here it's put a little a and three dots and I'll do the same again for here right click go to chord settings and put hold hold and then what we're going to hear is two oh, don't know what happened there let's try that again hold chord all instruments okay so it's going to be two nice long strums and it's going to be for all these instruments bass piano drums guitars harmonica and vocal ooze although the ooze and ours aren't playing here um, we'll just have one long strum so I'm just going to hit generate So we had two long strums there. So you might want to use this technique at the, on the last chord of a um, of a section of the song. So in this case, it's the chorus before going into the verse. You might want to use it on the verse before going into the chorus. Those are when they really suit. But what is quite good about this option uh, and that I often use is sometimes you want everything to to hold except for bass and drums. I often have the bass and drums playing through um, and have all the other instruments holding. So I will right click, go to call settings and say all except bass and drums. Okay, so there you see it's put a B and a D, so that's saying a, a hold, it'll do a, a hold, a single strum for all the instruments except for the bass and drums. So this is what it will sound like. And you know that can really help um, move up your, uh, give your your backing a little bit of variety and a little bit of uh, a build, and that kind of stuff um, is using the stop stops and holds. Another thing I want to show you quickly is how to add lyrics to your um, to your song. Um, I, I'm very cognizant of the time. We've been running for 45 minutes already. Um, if everybody can just uh, let me know that they're following along. Uh, if I'm going too fast, I uh, apologize. I'm trying to get through as much as I can in an hour. Um, just let me know if you're following along. So the chord display, um, let me just switch it off first. In order to put these scrolling lyrics into your song, the first thing you do is you press the chord display, go to layers and choose uh, bar lyrics okay you see it's put this little blue line at the top that is where you can type in your lyrics I have found that the best way to um, to get your lyrics is to to do the following so go and look on Google and get the lyrics so I have got in my song I've got a verse and a chorus Open. Um, okay, sorry, file new. Don't say. Okay, so you copy and paste that. Good. Thank you so much. Thanks so much. Um, copy and paste the the lyrics from Google into to Notepad. And what the trick here is to put each bars worth of lyrics in its own line its own line inside notepad so go am amazing grace how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me and then we've got a blank a blank line I once was lost but now am found was blind but now I see it was grace that taught my heart to fear oh, it was grace that taught my heart to fear and grace my fears relieved Another, how precious did that grace appear 
the R, R first lead. Okay, so once you've put each bar of lyrics into its own line, you just copy, just control C, go over to band in a box and double click in the first, in the little blue space above the very first chord. Okay, you see it turns purple, which means that um, you, it's expecting you to, to type something or copy and paste something. Now, all you do is you press Control V. And you can see how fantastic this is. Band in a Box has put the lyrics into the right spot here. And they will scroll along when you, um, when you play. So, here we go. You've got a whole, you've got a whole backtrack with lyrics and everything in there. It is absolutely fantastic, even if I say so myself. And it has literally taken us just over half an hour to do that. Now, recording vocals. That is a big subject that I'm only just going to be able to introduce you to and be able to do a very, very quick demo of how to do it. Um, your your vocals and your instruments will be as good as. The, the your, your microphone really um, so you do need a microphone to be able to record but that said you don't need to spend an absolute fortune on a studio mic so this particular song here is this love you see this here this is a USB microphone and um, it costs $99 it's a Samsung Meteor and uh, you just plug it straight into your computer. That's all you do. So this wire goes straight here, into straight into the USB uh, port of my computer. And I think you'll agree. It will share the shelter. That the, the, there's nothing wrong with the quality. And then once you've been recording for a little bit, um, you know, you can look at upgrading. So once you think, oh, I wish I could do this at X, Y, and Z, you can upgrade. So I upgraded to a Rode NT microphone, and I've just purchased a really nice Rode Studio microphone with a vocal shield and the whole thing. But that's like seven years down the line, you know. I've been using this, this, this Meteor for a long time. But you might have a audio interface and a nice studio microphone or whatever. But my advice on recording audio is just get going with what you've got. Just get going and learn how to um, to record and to mix and to edit and everything with what you've got. I'm sorry, I know you can all hear my dog barking. His name's Finley. He's having a good evening bark at all the other local dogs. Right, so once you set up your audio driver, and I'm not going to be able to go through that because it's going to depend a lot on what device you have, um, you press this click record audio and you can see here it's giving you some ideas you shouldn't ever be in the red you should just be uh, in the yellow okay you shouldn't really even be touching the red because that means that it's clipping so my my levels are a little bit high maybe uh, uh, they could come down a bit but for now I'm just going to leave them there and you just press record and I'm going to record a little bit of audio Say so keep take. Okay, so it's not the best quality because I am just uh, recording with my headphones. <laughs> I haven't got my microphone set up, so the quality of the audio is not going to be fantastic. Um, but there it is. There's the audio track. So it's put it in there in its own track. And um, you can now, if you hit generate and play, you'll hear my audio coming through. Uh, yes, hanging Chad, that is, is this love, Bob Marley. My cover of it. 
Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. Okay, so it's a little bit loud and it's not a great quality, but you get the picture. So now, when do you save this band in a box song? Okay, so I'm just going to go save as Amazing Grace. Okay, okay, to replace it. Oh, it says unable to save it. Okay, okay. File Explorer. What Band in a Box does is it puts it it makes the it puts your vocal in a WAV file with exactly the same name as the SGU. So this is your band in a box file. This SGU is, is where the, um, the, the band in a box file actually sits. And then this is your background vocal. So if I, I mean, sorry, your, your lead vocal. So if I double click this, you'll see it's just a, a file of my, of my recording. Amazing Grace. So that's um, how you know where the vocal is sitting. The, voc the, 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 the actual audio doesn't sit inside the, the band in a box file. It sits as a separate file. Okay, so that basically covers a very, very, very quick overview of, um, of band in a box. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just go through, if you can give me five minutes, I've got six more minutes to go of this uh, presentation, and then, um, okay. So what I've done, I, as, as I said, I have just been appointed a band in a box reseller, so I'm very excited to start spreading the word about this wonderful product and being in a position to be able to sell it from my website. So what I've done is I've put together a package for you um, for today and tomorrow. So if you're a brand new Band in a Box user, um, you can get Band in a Box Pro version, which is the entry level version of Band in a Box worth $129, plus the uh, beginner's guide to making and performing with Band in a Box backing tracks worth $10, and then 10 SGU songs, uh, with chords and lyrics and styles also worth $10. And then I'm going to throw in a half hour one-on-one -on -one Skype lesson to get you going on Band in a Box. Um, and then I'm going to also put in the the first song with Band in a Box for Windows, course for, which is worth $10. And um, available for today and tomorrow from my website at $130. And there's the link forward slash great dash offer so jot that down if you are a new band in a box user you might want to take advantage of that of that offer okay 100% no questions asked 30 day money back guarantee you just need to tell me you're not happy and I will immediately refund your money so that's if you're a brand new band in a box user and it's uh, for today and tomorrow that price then if you're an existing band in a box user but could use some extra help um, I'll give you Band in a Box the ebook, a beginner's guide to making and performing with Band in a Box backing tracks with $10. 10 SGU songs, uh, those are things like Killing Me Softly and Stand By Me and um, my own personal Band in a Box songs that you can get up and running straight away. A half an hour one-on-one -on -one Skype lesson to get you going worth $30 and also the first song with Band in a Box. Some of you might have already had uh, some of these so they obviously won't uh, be useful for you, but I'm throwing it all in and valued at $60 available for today and tomorrow at $30. Also, again, no questions asked 30 day money back guarantee. Um, just tell me you weren't happy and I won't ask why you weren't happy. I will just refund the money. Um, no questions asked. So that is to celebrate me becoming a band in a box reseller. If there are other versions of Band in a Box that you would consider buying, they all go up in price from $129. They go right up to, I don't know, $600. But um, at the moment, I'm just offering the, the, the Pro version because it's uh, the, the entry level. 
and um, it's very it's very easy to download so you can download that some of the more expensive versions of band in a box you have to uh, get on a hard drive and get it delivered to you etc which you might not want to wait for um, so that that's really it um, I, I think I am done two minutes to spare on my clock it's two minutes to nine but by the time this comes through on your side it's probably going to be after nine but please, I would absolutely love to know what you thought about the, the, the webinar, whether I was going too fast, okay, if I, if I should cut it down, the amount that I'm trying to cover in an hour, or if maybe I should make the webinar longer, um, what, your, what your thoughts are, and um, if you would like to have a look at that special offer, just go to my website, www.doannecooper.co.za, great offer. And you can uh, you can take advantage of those those offers. I'm just going to have a look quickly at the messages on the chat. Um, hanging Chad, your link to the ebook is not clickable. I will put a link in the in the chats here, and you can also get it from my website. So go to www.joannecooper.co.za, and you'll see that the ebook is there. Diana, yes, the YouTube video will be available. I will send out the link so you can um, you can have a look at it again. Thank you, Hanging Chad. I'm glad you purchased the book. <laughs> and you hear my, my dog barking there. I'm glad that you've all followed through. Oh, good, good, good. Uh, yeah, the, the, uh, the lyrics is absolutely fantastic. Oh, and thank you, Piper Patty for. Okay, okay, super. Um, inspired. Okay, that's fantastic. Thank you, Sandy. And yeah, please go and have a look at the at the special offer. See if there's anything that you fancy. If you if you want if you want just the one-on-one um, -on -one Skype uh, session to get you going, you can be welcome to place an order for that. I haven't got it as a product on my website, but just send me an email. Um, Thirteen accompaniment tracks. I've just added background vocals to one. Oh, I know. I know. It. It is amazing. Oh, thank you, Ben Rowe. I'm, I'm really, I'm really pleased. And I am over and out. Thank you so much, everybody. I'm sorry about some. And go and join the, uh, the user group, the Band in a Box user group if you, on Facebook, because there's a great community there. I'm on there all the time. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Diana. I'm so glad. Okay, we'll see you all next time. Bye-bye, everybody. Oh, there you go.